Do you suffer from persistent hamstring pain that just won't quit? If so, it might be sciatica instead. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'll help you uncover the true cause of your pain, plus share some tips to help you relieve it. Now, first of all, how do you know whether your hamstring pain is truly coming from a hamstring injury or whether it's from sciatica? Well, your hamstrings are really strong muscles, and so they're not injured easily. Usually hamstring injuries or hamstring strains happen with high force activities. For example, a sprinter sprinting across the finish line. If you just woke up one morning and your hamstrings were a little bit sore or tight, or if it's gradually been building over a period of time, it's probably more likely that the issue is sciatica related. Hamstring injuries don't usually just happen to come on. And while many people may have stiff or tight hamstrings, stiff or tight hamstrings themselves usually don't cause pain, at least not in the hamstring. So that's one way to tell. A second way is if you have a history of back pain, or if you have associated buttock pain or numbness and tingling in your leg along with your hamstring pain. Those other associated symptoms are more likely to be caused by a nerve root problem in your lower back or sciatica from your buttock rather than a true hamstring strain. And the third way to tell is there's a test called the slump test. To do this test, you wanna start out sitting in a chair and you wanna slump over and clasp your hands behind your back. Now bring your chin down towards your chest. And what this does is it tensions your spinal cord and your nervous system by rounding it out around your back. Now you're gonna add further tension into the system by straightening your leg out. Now, if you feel a stretch in that position, that could be caused by either a hamstring problem or by sciatica. Now, the way to tell the difference is by moving something remote to your hamstring. So for example, bringing your foot further up in this direction. If you feel an increase in the hamstring pain or tightness by bringing your foot up, that's gotta be a nerve problem because your hamstrings don't attach down to your ankle. Your hamstrings stop right at the knee. Furthermore, if you bring your head up and that releases some of the tension off of your hamstrings, that's also likely a nerve problem because your hamstrings don't attach up to your head. And so if you can move a remote area and that affects your hamstring symptoms, then it's probably not a hamstring injury to begin with. So what do you do to relieve hamstring pain, whether it's coming from a hamstring injury or from sciatica? Well, before we get into what to do, there are two common mistakes that people make for both hamstring injuries as well as sciatica. And I wanna share those with you first and then we'll get more on to what you actually should do. One of the most common mistakes people make for both hamstring strains and sciatica is stretching their hamstrings. And you'd think that if a muscle was sore that you should stretch it, right? Well, hamstring injuries are actually caused by the hamstrings being overstretched. If you think about a sprinter sprinting across the finish line, a strain is actually an overstretching or a tear of a muscle. And so if the muscle is overstretched or torn, the last thing you wanna do is stretch it farther. Furthermore, with sciatica problems or nerve problems, if your nerve is pinched in your lower back or pinched in the buttock and you stretch it out, that's gonna put tension on the sciatic nerve and the nerve roots. And muscles were made to stretch, but nerves were not made to stretch. So you might actually have tight hamstrings if you have a sciatica problem, but that's because the muscles tighten up in order to protect the nerve from further injury. So regardless of whether you have an actual hamstring strain or whether you have sciatica, it's probably not a good idea to stretch your hamstrings, even if they feel tight. So what should you do instead? Well, one good option is doing what's called a nerve glide. In the case of a nerve problem like sciatica, doing a nerve glide by moving your leg gently back and forth within the pain-free range 
is good to help the nerve move back and forth through the tissues that it's supposed to run to. It also gets movement and blood flow to the nerve, which your nerves need to be healthy. Now in the case of a hamstring problem, you still want to move that muscle and get it used to moving again and decrease your brain's fear of moving that muscle, but you don't want to stretch it to end range to the point where you're further stretching it and damaging it. So moving your leg back and forth, whether you're just doing that to get your hamstring moving again, or whether you're using it to glide your sciatic nerve back and forth is a good thing to do, regardless of whether your back of the thigh pain is caused by a hamstring problem or whether it's caused by sciatica. Another common mistake that people make is foam rolling their hamstrings. And if you have a torn tissue, you really don't want to roll over the sore or injured part. There may be some value to rolling on other parts of the hamstrings that aren't the painful area, but you definitely don't want to roll right over the part that's torn or injured because you're just irritating the problem further. And if you have a sciatic nerve problem, if you have a nerve that's irritable and you're rolling on it and mashing on it, you're probably just going to make it more irritable. And nerves tend to stay irritable for a long period of time. When you make them mad, they tend to stay mad. And so it's a good idea not to do things that further irritate your problem. Now, there are some good uses for foam rollers if you have a hamstring problem or have sciatica, and that's using it on areas that aren't painful. So, for example, with the hamstrings, rolling on parts of your hamstrings that don't hurt or aren't injured, if you can relieve stiffness, in the parts of the hamstring that aren't overstretched, that takes tension off the parts of the hamstring that are overstretched. But probably a better use for it is using it on your quadriceps, the muscles that counterbalance your hamstrings. Because if you're having to work against more resistance from your quadriceps or your hip flexors, your hamstrings are going to have to work harder. And so rolling on the front of your thighs, again, where it doesn't hurt, is a good idea, again, whether you have a sciatica problem or a hamstring strain. Now, one of your quadriceps muscles, the rectus femoris, crosses both the hip and the knee joints. So it's a hip flexor in addition to a knee extensor. And that helps counterbalance the hip extension action of your hamstrings. But you have other hip flexors that don't cross the knee. And if your hip flexors are too stiff, they can pull you into a forward tilted position. If you have a pinched nerve in your lower back from having too much arch, for example, spinal stenosis or degenerative disc disease, that can irritate sciatic nerve. So stiff hip flexors are a major cause of sciatica, and they also create more resistance for your hamstrings to work against. Now using the foam roller on your quadriceps is good for the rectus femoris, but it doesn't quite address the iliopsoas, the other hip flexors that only cross the hips. And to release those, there is a tool called the psoas release tool that you can use. You just put it on the ground like this, kind of wedge it right above or between your hip bones, and then just lay on it like that, take a couple deep breaths, and breathe in and out and allow the tool to kind of sink into your psoas. That'll help to get the hip flexors to relax. Now, after you've done some of that soft tissue work, now you wanna stretch your hip flexors. And doing it in a kneeling position is good if you are able to put some weight on your knee because it allows you to stretch both your iliopsoas as well as your rectus femoris at one time. And so you do that by starting in a partial lunge position like this, rolling your pelvis underneath of you to flatten out your lower back, and then pushing your pelvis forward just until you feel a stretch in the front of the hip and the thigh. You don't want to go so far that you allow your back to arch because then your psoas is just pulling your lower back into more arch, and you can potentially even pinch the nerves in your lower back doing this. So again, just roll your pelvis underneath of you till you feel a little bit of a stretch and then push the pelvis forward. It doesn't take a whole lot of pushing it forwards 
before you start to feel a stretch here. Now, if you just can't do that because you have some knee pain and you're unable to kneel on your knee, or if you have trouble getting on and off the floor, you can do that in a standing position as well, where you start out in sort of a stagger stance, a standing lunge, so to speak, roll your pelvis underneath, and then push your hips forwards. Now, this is more of an iliopsoas stretch than it is a rectus femoris stretch, but if you have a really stiff rectus femoris, you still may feel it a little bit in the front of your thigh as well. Now, in addition to stretching your hip flexors, you also want to strengthen your glutes. Your glutes counteract your hip flexors and they also assist your hamstrings. So if you have sciatica from an anterior pelvic tilt like this, your glute muscles will help decrease that arch in your lower back and open up some of the spaces where the nerve roots that make up your sciatic nerve come out. Additionally, when you're running or when you're walking, your hamstrings function to slow down your leg as it's swinging forwards. Or if you're bending forwards, they help to slow you down as you're bending forwards so you don't just bend in half like that. And that's a combination of both your hamstrings and your glutes working in a hip extension action or rather resisting hip flexion, slowing down the motion of hip flexion. And so if you strengthen your gluteus maximus or your butt muscles, if your glutes are stronger, your hamstrings don't have to work quite so hard. And one good way to strengthen your gluteus maximus is doing a bridge. You can do that in a laying down position like this, where you do a little bit of a pelvic tilt and flatten your lower back out on the floor or on the bed. Now this is good because it also helps open up spaces in your lower back if you do have a pinched nerve in your lower back. Now you wanna make sure your feet are flat on the floor because if you're digging your heels in like that, you're just gonna use your hamstrings in order to bridge up. So you wanna make sure your feet are flat on the surface, do a pelvic tilt, and then only lift up slightly, as high as you can without allowing your lower back to arch. So again, pelvic tilt, squeeze your glutes, lift your bottom, and that helps strengthen your abdominals, strengthen your glutes, and you might also feel a little bit of a stretch in your rectus femoris when doing that. So for that reason, doing a bridge is good whether you have pain caused by a hamstring problem or whether your pain is coming from a pinched nerve in your lower back. Now the final tip to help with hamstring pain is that you do eventually need to strengthen your hamstrings. When you bend forwards, you use your hamstrings eccentrically, meaning they're lengthening while they're also producing force to bend forwards. And a lot of people who have sciatica or back pain are actually afraid of bending forwards or may have even been told that bending forwards is bad for them. So by doing a straight leg deadlift or otherwise known as a hip hinge, that's good for both eccentrically strengthening your hamstrings if you've had a hamstring injury, as well as for retraining the motion of forward bending if you have a lower back or sciatica problem. And to do that, you wanna think about starting your bending motion by pushing your hips backwards. If you're leaning forwards like this, you're using a lot of your lower back muscles in order to help lower you down. By pushing your hips back, you're using both your glutes as well as your hamstrings for the motion of hip extension or rather eccentrically lowering you down into flexion. Now you just wanna go down as far as you feel comfortable going. So again, this should be a pain-free exercise then squeeze your glutes and hamstrings to bring you back up to a standing position. So lower yourself down. You should be trying to relax your lower back during this as well. Then squeeze your glutes and hamstrings to come back up. Allow your lower back to relax. Push your hips back. Squeeze the glutes and hamstrings to come back up to a standing position. And starting with just five repetitions of that, Maybe enough if you're new to that motion of bending or are just getting back to that motion of bending for the first time. 
Eventually, you may want to start to work up to 10 or 15 repetitions, but again, these should all be pain-free. Now, keep in mind, this isn't always an either-or type of problem, because if you strain your hamstrings, for example, doing a sprint or running, you may also tension the sciatic nerve. But fortunately, the treatments for the two problems do tend to parallel each other. Now, I would recommend seeing a healthcare professional to get help for the problem rather than trying to navigate it on your own. And if you are in the St. Louis area here, we'd be happy to help you out here at More for Life. And if you're watching this from somewhere else, we have other tips for both hamstring problems as well as sciatica in these videos over here. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.